Uh, today we are going to be using the SN30 uh, Pro 2 because uh, since we are going to be doing platformers, that is what I'm going to do. So first, let's just take a quick look at the settings here. So just go through really quickly. If you're picking up this game, you have the option to turn on the music, to turn off the sound effects. Uh, you actually can go with a scan line type of view if you prefer that for a CRT type of effect. Today, I'll be playing on the regular effect, but that is an option for you. Uh, and that's about it for the options. Uh, as I said, this has been provided by the developer, but no sponsorship, nothing like that. However, little surprise, he did give me a couple of extra game codes to give away, um, which I'll be probably doing in the highlight video of this. So if you're here today, you want a code of the game after. When I post the highlight video of this, Comment in that video. I'll be doing the regular type of giveaway thing. I'll everyone who comments in the video is going to get a chance to win a copy of the game. Mm, I am doing a very well. So this is a 2D platformer. Obviously, there seems to be some kind of influence from Norse mythology. Our guy looks somewhat like what we would expect a Thor to look like, I guess. Uh, so here we have an interaction. Hello, what a beautiful day, a vivid island. It's such a lovely place. Do you mind if I play outside? I was just about to suggest that to you too. Cool, thanks mom. So this is our character's mom. By the way, there is one thing is that basically I noticed when you get to a character in the text box, they start automatically. You don't have to press a button. And if you move out of range, the text box stops. So if you don't actually want storyline, you can jump straight through and do this like a speedrunning game by skipping all the storyline. It's a little bit of an odd effect that you have to get used to, but if you want none of the storyline, it is a little bit positive since this is more of a basic-ish uh, platformer. But as long as you remain in range of the character, you'll get the little storyline bits. So For the moment, we've only got our little punch here. We're going to punch these snakes out. There we go. Let's cat. Let's get these few extra gems here. Pressing up on the exit button will get us out of the level. Let you know how you did, what you collected, and how you did time-wise. Awesome. So, so far, what I've seen about this platformer, it feels very Mario Brother inspired. Mario Brothers inspired with a little bit of Mega Man. When we hold down the Y, you see this like charges up just like Mega Man's Buster. We throw out our hammer and basically we can deal with snakes. So like you see, the only thing that's really interesting is the hammer is like bounces around. So when you throw the hammer, you have to go pick it up to get it back basically. So you can lose it by throwing it in the wrong situation. I'll try and focus a little more because we have actually no hit points right now. Now there are hit points in the game, by the way. And that is what I was speaking with Joshin about, the creator of the game, is that currently there's no indicator to tell you if you have a hit point or not. So you have to sort of keep track here, like I got a heart, now I do have a hit point. But I have to keep tra track of that mentally, there is no visual indication that you have a hit point. And he's working on a fix for that though, it should be a, a, like, he, he estimated about like three or four weeks, and he'll, he'll have a fix out with a visual indicator for whether you have a hit point or not. But like I said, even though that's a small defect, overall, the game controls very well so far. Uh, so, you know, if you're expecting for just a nice uh, twitchy platformer, it's controlling very well. There are upgrades, and this is what this guy just told us, that basically here we are going to be fighting a boss and getting our first upgrade. So we have these things that are going to fall from the sky. We're just going to try to not get hit. We're going to throw our hammer at him. So far he wasn't too challenging and yet if our hammer gets stuck behind him like that, that is the only time we have to wait for it to return to us. There we just lost our hit point unfortunately. But I'm going to try to bounce it behind him again. So far that's what I, I sort of found as a strategy for this guy. If you manage to make contact with him a couple of times like that you get extra damage. So I don't know if that was intended. But so far, that is the way it's working. And we've got a little boss fight. Pretty simple here. I don't think the intention was to make this difficult at this point because this is like an introduction to uh, the upgrade method. So we've beaten the boss. 
and we will be getting now our double jump. Like I said, I've only played the first five levels, so pretty soon we're going to get into territory where I, ha I have no idea how this is working. But honestly, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised when I tried this one. When I made last week's preview video, I saw this one. I was like, you know what? If this one turns out to have solid mechanics with the presentation, it is, uh, it, it, it's looking pretty good. So here we have a hidden gem. Now there's a lot of little power-ups and things that I'm getting like food that I'm actually not quite sure what they're doing. Uh, I forgot to ask Joshin if there was anything that the food was supposed to be doing. Because uh, the hearts obviously are your hit points, but the food, I, I was wondering what they were doing. So here you could exit right away, by the way, but if we want to try and go get that, I think there's a third crystal down there, we can uh, try and get it here. So here you sort of have to chuck your hammer, but you have to chuck it so that it breaks the blocks. So it does add like a little bit of level of... Uh, you want um, sort of strategy where you have to sort of chuck your hammer in specific ways. But it's going pretty well so far. Like I said, we are getting to the last stage that I've completed. So the next one is the last stage I've completed. After that, we are in brand new territory. Oh, this looks like a power up. Let's see what this is about. Oh, dang. We've got uh, we've got some uh, Mega Man Hammer Buster action going here. That is awesome. Actually, this is really nice. I like this. <laughs> it, this has a nice feeling. Like the other hammer felt slightly clunky at moments. I can't chuck the hammers vertically. That is a little. Uh... Ow. It is making it a little more difficult and I can't shut the hammers vertically. Ooh. Yeah. Made it by the skin of my feet there. Oh, this is good. Uh, it was good. I get the wrong pattern there. I'm gonna get toasted. Close. Ugh, dang. Ah. At that time, I could dodge that. Okay, I, I think it's the same pattern, though. So she's gonna pop. Yeah, okay, we've got the pattern. We can get her the next time. Uh, I'm gonna do this safe. We're just gonna wait for it to fly down, and then I'm gonna mash her out. I know I can I know I can mash her. There we go. Got her. Woo! <sighs> Second boss down. Do we get a power up? Dream it tonight. So oh, we're at another boss. Dang. Oof. Okay. He just hit me. So he, he throws fire. Hey, this guy's a this guy's pattern's a little less obvious. Oh, but we is that like a mini boss? I am assuming it is. Oh, new skill, wall jump. So there are more skills. Yay. Oh, so now basically it's like a Okay, but we can't I'm not sure how it works. Oh, it's a... I'll be honest, it's a wee bit wonky. This one is not as obvious as the other ones. It seems like you have to really... You can't jump off of the same wall twice. Like, it's not a Mega Man wall jump where you can just sort of, like, shimmy up the wall. You have to switch to a different wall before you can jump on it again. Okay, come on. When there's no spikes, not an issue. We've got it down. Jump from one wall to the other. Now we're getting to the spike section though. 
Now, I don't need to do the first wall. I can double jump straight to the second. Oh, got through it there, but that was uh, a little rough. And now... Wow. Yeah. I don't think this is going to end up being all throughout a easy platformer. <laughs> I think the, the challenge level is going to keep rising as we go through. Yeah, hey, Andrew, how you doing, man? Another Onimusha, yeah, they, they, they have... There's a lot of franchises. I've, I, I've always said that those big developers that have these huge IPs... If they, if they really don't have the resources to make those games, they should really license out those smaller IPs to, like, indie studios that really want to, like, make games for them. With some with a decent level of quality control. Like, it's not hard to get it, to choose a good indie studio. Whoops. Wow. So, just lost our hit point by killing one of these guys that I didn't know launches projectiles. So, we're probably going to die to the wasp type thing down there because now we lost our hit point which sort of sucks like even nintendo could license out some of its smaller properties like it well like it used to do with like you know the um mario and luigi franchise to like smaller indie studios that could like keep popping out cheaper titles using those ips but Exactly, exactly. Okay, like you give them to Koei Tecmo, you license out Onimusha. It's win-win for everyone. Oh yeah, that would be awesome. If Nintendo's lights licensing it out. But like even some of the bigger but lesser used franchises from Nintendo. Oh, we made it. Yes. So I knew you could beat those projectiles if you just move your butt and get... Now I'm not going to be dumb this time. I'm just going to wait for the water. And then try to control my, my, my jump down. It, jumping down is way harder than jumping up. Oof. Okay. Now, I'm scared to, like, go anywhere that I shouldn't. Because I'm feeling like at one point I'm going to get jacked by, like, some random spikes coming out of the ground. <laughs> like here. Okay, ah! Almost, almost got my toes wet there. Yes, sir! Level 17 complete. Oof, that was a little bit nerve-wracking there. I will not lie, I will not lie, but uh, I'm telling you guys, I'm really liking this game. At a $2 price point, I would easily suggest this game to anyone who likes platformers. Uh, and definitely, if we're, you know... Now, don't forget that this is, like, first impressions. But first impressions, at this price point, like, $10 and under... I would easily say that this is like a 7.5-ish type game. Like, if I had to give a score right now at this price point for this game, based on what I've played, easily a 7.5. So, we are going to... Um, I'm going to just get out of this to hopefully save my progress. 